Another midterm election cycle has come and gone with Republicans fumbling their opportunity to win back full control of the United States House of Representatives. Now, and Congress as a whole, I might argue. Now it's time for them to face why that happened and where they go from here. Now, the why to me is clear, folks. It is a result of Donald Trump's toxic presence combined with Republicans' lack of a plan for the issues facing the American people because they are so focused on owning the libs. Whatever, whatever that means, I still don't know. To the Republican Party apparatus, the culture wars, they are not a distraction. They are, in fact, the playbook designed to rile up a part of the base that they cannot afford to alienate. Now that we are clear on that, on Friday... Elon Musk retweeted the quote-unquote Twitter files, a collection of documents that detail how the social media platform supposedly buried a story about a Ukrainian energy company paying money to the president's son, Hunter Biden. First of all, I just have to say that this whole thing is just ridiculous and it's not true. But with me now to weigh in is the former chair of the Republican National Committee, Michael Steele himself. He's also an MSNBC political analyst. Mr. Chairman, you and I started this conversation on Morning Joe the other day, and I was like, I want to continue it. So let's talk yes. about Elon Musk's efforts um, to draw attention to Hunter Biden's laptop once again and Donald Trump's really absurd response on his social media platform. The way that the president responded is to basically say that Twitter's actions warrant ignoring the Constitution and undoing the results of the 2020 election. But to be clear, Neither of those things are possible. So what are your thoughts on all of this tomfoolery over the last 24 hours? I guess with Musk is to prove that, hey, I'm the right kind of Republican, meaning I'm a Trump Republican. I'm a, uh, you know, election denying Republican. I, I don't know what kind of Republican he is. I mean, probably next year he'll be an independent or a Democrat, depending on how the wind blows. Um, but the re but the reality of it is uh, putting those things back on the platform uh, it juxtaposition with the argument that he's all about free speech um, really undermines the central, some of the central tenets of free speech is that it is, it is about, yes, the freedom of you to say things, but not at the harm or expense of someone else. And so when you're perpetuating lies and, and, and so forth, um, you're really kind of laughing in the face of this idea of what the platform he claims is supposed to be. For the party, um, they love it. I mean, they got, they got the world, one of the world's richest men, uh, helping them uh, foment the kind of distrust of the system uh, and disinformation um, where their fingerprints don't necessarily have to be on it. Mm, like a little plausible deniability, if you will. Okay, yeah, well, well Elon said. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't me, it was Elon. Okay, so yeah. now you've got the Republican Party um, earlier this week announcing yet another autopsy after their midterm losses. This isn't the first autopsy. There was one, I believe, in uh, 2012. So, 12, right. W in 2012. So what, what is your take on that particular effort? And do you ever think that the party will actually move away from this extremism and, this, um, the, and, and the tenets of the culture wars? They move away from the extremist, uh, extremism and the tenets of the culture war when it doesn't pay anymore. It doesn't pay the dividends of votes. It doesn't pay the dividends of cash. So right now it pays. Their base is continually doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on that. So that's going to be in play. Uh, the autopsy, well, okay, yeah. You know, uh, they use a lot of formaldehyde in autopsies. <laughs> so, you know, the reality of it is uh, you get what you get. Uh, it's, it's a corpse. Um, and the fact that the last one went nowhere because they allowed Donald Trump to essentially uh, crap all over it uh, when he came down and announced his uh, run for the presidency by declaring uh, Mexicans as rapists and murderers um, in the face of a, of a then autopsy report that said, hey, we want to reach out to Hispanics. I don't know where they hope to go with this. Um, you don't need to get people in a room, um, Simone, to, to tell you what happened in 20. We, uh, we saw 18. what happened. Right, 18, 20, or 22. You don't need to ha have a meeting on that. It's obvious. And, and, but this is, again, uh, one of the things that the party is known to do, uh, and that is let's all regroup and we'll put out a, a white paper and we'll just get the folks to believe something new about us. But their actions belie all of that. It is, it is just quite concerning. I guess, uh, do you feel hopeful at all? I know we got we have to go, but do you feel hopeful at all that sometime in our life, not with this iteration, we'll something different? No, oh, not Lord. with this iteration of the party. I mean, I think, you know, those of us who are still in it, 
uh, the Liz Cheney's and Adam Kinzinger's, we're, we're, we're fighting to hold the ground that we have as best we can so that whatever comes after that, uh, after this, you have something to build off of uh, with those Reagan-esque and Lincoln-esque uh, tenants. Uh, but with this leadership that's feckless and committed to Trump and Trump himself, uh, <laughs> mm. Well, I think we need two strong political parties in this country, so I'm yes. just going to hold out hope that it happens sooner than later. Michael Steele, I'm very grateful for you. Thank you, my friend. Good to be with you, Simone. Thank you.